So what's better for gaming? Is it Windows 10 or is it Windows 11? Well, today we're gonna find out. Stay tuned. So everyone says that Windows 11 sucks for gaming. However, I did a video on this about a year ago and that's not the results that I got. In fact, my results showed that it was about the same. So today I figured I would revisit the subject, but this time there's a little twist. In the last two videos, I showed you how to optimize Windows 10 and Windows 11 for gaming. So we're not gonna be putting Windows 10 and 11 up against each other in their stock form. Rather, we're gonna put Windows 10 and 11 up against each other with them both optimized for gaming. But first, we got some bills to pay. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now. On with the video. Now, ultimately, you don't just load Windows and start gaming. I wouldn't have tons of videos on my channel about improving FPS if we're just using gaming systems in their stock form. No, we go through and we tweak them, we deep load them, and we optimize them for what we want to use them for. In this case, it's gaming. So, to be fair, we should be testing Windows 10 and 11 against each other with them both optimized. So. That's what we're doing. If you'd like to know how I optimized both versions of Windows for this test, then check out my last two videos and I go through it step by step. The system that we're doing these benchmarks on is a Ryzen 5 5600 with 32 gigs of RAM. Both Windows 10 and 11 are loaded on a one terabyte SATA SSD. The system also has an EVGA RTX 3060. Both the CPU and GPU are water cooled, but only the GPU is overclocked. The GPU is running at 200 megahertz overclock on the core and a 1200 megahertz overclock on memory. I actually was able to get a slightly better overclock, but it wasn't stable in all the games that I was benchmarking, so I dropped the overclock down to make it stable in all my benchmarks. So, with all that said, we have tons of benchmarks to get through, so let's jump right into them. The first game we're looking at today is Black Mesa. This is a remake of Half-Life 1 using the Half-Life 2 engine. We should see some awesome numbers from this game because it's a pretty old game. Actually, it's not that old, but it's based on an older engine. With Windows 10, we got an average FPS of 191 and a 1% low of 123.9. Once switching to Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 198.6 with exactly the same 1% low of 123.9. In this game, Windows 11 clearly won with a 3.9% better FPS than Windows 10. However, with us edging right under 200 FPS in both Windows 10 and 11, it was an unnoticeable benefit, but it was a benefit for Windows 11. The next game we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2. I still wish they would bring back all of the CSGO maps back into this game. I miss the safe house map, or the militia map as some people know it. In Windows 10, we got an average FPS of 173.7, with a 1% low of 86. When switching over to Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 180.9, and a 1% low of 93.9. In Counter-Strike 2, this is another win for Windows 11, with a 4.1% improvement, and an almost a 9% improvement in our 1% low. Now, this makes sense because Counter-Strike 2 is a brand new game. Maybe it's been more optimized for Windows 11. Either way, these numbers are looking really good for Windows 11. The next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, this game was tested exactly the way I would play it. That was with RTX and DLSS, both on balanced. RTX tends to hurt the frame rate, but it looks really good. However, DLSS helps to make up some of that frame rate loss. 
With Windows 10, Cyberpunk got an average frame rate of 53.6 and a 1% low of 43.7. Once switching over to Windows 11, we got an average frame rate of 54.6 and a 1% low of 44.7. You know, Windows 11 won again, however, not by as much. We got a 1.8% benefit in Windows 11. But at such an overall lower frame rate, 1.8% makes a pretty big difference. The next game we're looking at today is Deliver Us the Moon. This is actually a really fun game, but it's way too short. It's also a great game for seeing the benefit of RTX. So with that said, RTX and DLSS were turned on. Also, this is the game that gave me the worst results the last time I put Windows 10 and 11 against each other in gaming. We got a 20% drop in frame rate in Windows 11 the last time I tested it. So, I had to include it in this video. In Windows 10, we got an average FPS of 76.3, with a 53.4 1% low. When switching over to Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 76.8, with a 60.5 1% low. Clearly, whatever was causing this game to perform poorly in Windows 11 has been fixed, because Windows 11 won yet again, but just barely with a 0.7% better average FPS. However, we did see a 12% improvement in our 1% low, which was actually very noticeable in gameplay. There's nothing worse than jerkiness in zero gravity, so better frame timings are much appreciated. The next game we're looking at today is Dirt Rally 2. This is an older game, but it's a great example of a driving game with some pretty decent graphics. With Windows 10, we got an average FPS of 84.3, and a 1% low of 70.8. When switching over to Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 82.2 with a 1% low of 71.3. Now, this is the first game that Windows 11 lost in, with Windows 10 getting 2.5% better average FPS. However, Windows 11 did get a better 1% low, but only by 0.7%. I would call that kind of within margin of error. And with that said, Windows 10 gets the win in this game. The next game we're looking at today is GTA 5, primarily because I include this game in pretty much every video I do, benchmarking. It's also one of the best-selling games in history, so I think it belongs on the test. That is at least until GTA 6 comes out, if it ever comes out. With Windows 10, I got an average FPS of 136.2 and a 1% low of 92.9. Once switching over to Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 136.4 with a 1% low of 93.5. Now, this is another win for Windows 11, but you almost can't tell it's a win with only a 0.1% higher average frame rate. Even the 1% low was less than a percentage point difference. So with this one so close, I'm going to call it a tie. The next game we're looking at today is Red Dead Redemption 2. With this game, we are running it with DLSS on and the graphics settings right about in the middle. With Windows 10, we got an average frame rate of 88.4 and a 1% low of 65.5. Once switching over to Windows 11, we got an average frame rate of 87 with a 1% low of 68.5. This is another loss for Windows 11, but only a loss of 1.6%, which honestly is hardly noticeable. But we did see a 4.5% improvement in the 1% low. Just like in low gravity situations, good frame timing is great in an Old West shootout. The next game we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is an older game, but probably one of the best looking versions of Tomb Raider ever released. And it's still a really fun game to play. However, this is the game that gave me a lot of troubles with my GPU overclock. So this is the game that made me have to drop my core overclock to 200 megahertz. But then again, that's pretty typical with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. With Windows 10, we got an average FPS of 106 even and a 1% low of 94.4. Once switching over to Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 109.4 with a 1% low of 98.6. This is yet another win for Windows 11, scoring a 3.2% better frame rate with a 4% better 1% low. Now, these numbers are really close and both systems play the game just fine, but this is another win for Windows 11. Now, 
All of these benchmarks that we've done up to this point have not been synthetic benchmarks. Yes, some of these games do come with synthetic benchmarks built in, but they're not used in my benchmarking. What I do is I create a path and I try to repeat that path over and over again and test the differences in frame rate and frame timing while following the same path. So actually, I have to play these games exactly the same way over and over again in order to get accurate results. However, for this video, I wanted to go ahead and include a synthetic benchmark. So for that, we're using 3 Mark Time Spy. With Windows 10, we got a score of 9,446. I know, it's not the best, but it's an RTX 3060 after all, so it's pretty good in context. Once switching over to Windows 11, we got a score of 9594. That's a 1.6% improvement in Windows 11 over Windows 10. And if you break the score down, it gets kind of interesting. In Windows 10, the GPU score was 9673. And once switching over to Windows 11, we got a GPU score of 9874. That's a 2.1% improvement in Windows 11 over Windows 10. However, when we look at the CPU score in Windows 10, we scored an 8340. But in Windows 11, we scored an 8269. So we got a 0.9% drop in our CPU score in Windows 11. This is leading me to believe that it's possible that Windows 11 is scoring better in most of these games because of the way it handles the GPU over Windows 10. But the extra bloat in Windows 11 is hurting the CPU a little. But that's just my theory. So these numbers are quite interesting. In the last video I did on this topic, the numbers were really close, but just about every test Windows 10 won, but only by a little bit. Almost all of the tests were within margin of error. However, now it's looking like we're getting exactly the opposite. While all of these benchmarks did come extremely close, and most of them are well within the margin of error, Windows 11 won almost every benchmark. So, is Windows 11 better for gaming? No, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but it's not worse. In fact, you probably wouldn't even notice the difference between the two. However, moving forward, I suspect that Windows 11 is going to continue to improve and the time for improvement for Windows 10 has unfortunately passed. Microsoft has already announced that there won't be any more builds for Windows 10 after 22H2. Unfortunately, Windows 10 is in kind of like the software hospice. Microsoft will continue to release security patches until its inevitable end of support in 2025, but I don't see any improvements coming for Windows 10 in the meantime. With the new improvements in 23H2, which will likely be released by the time this video is published, Windows 11 keeps looking better and better. So, it might just be time to upgrade. But with all that said, if you'd like to see what these new improvements in Windows 11 23H2 are, then check out this video that I did a while back that discusses some of the highlights that caught my eye in 23H2. Some of them have me really considering moving to Windows 11. And the results I got from this video are only reinforcing that. As always, you guys have a great day.